Sports. And we'll see the Colts field stretching tight end. There were no answers for him a week ago, going well over 100 yards with several stops in the end zone. It's the Colts and the Jaguars, and it comes your way next on Madden NFL 24. The calendar may say autumn, but temperatures are still pretty sweltering here in North Florida. But the good news, the radar is clear. Still, hydration will be key today at TIAA Bank Field in Jacksonville. Today, we've got a Week 6 matchup for you here, as it'll be the Indianapolis Colts taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you look at this Jaguar team. They come in losers of two straight, so they're trying to right the ship here a little bit. They're teetering a little bit, aren't they? And now things could really go south if they lose this game, so they understand the importance of playing well and stopping this streak. Meanwhile, for the visiting Colts, they're off to a terrific start, unbeaten at 5-0 through the first month of change. And you can hang a lot of this early success on their defense, too. They're the tone setters for these guys, and the entire team feeds off of what they do. Set to go now in Week 6 of the NFL season and we are underway on EA Sports and the opening kickoff will not be returned as that will be a touchback well, the Jaguars ready to go on offense for the first time and they're led by the former number one pick in the draft in his third season now Charles Trevor Lawrence okay I thought there was something to build on in last week's game by his performance I thought he played fairly well overall the, the numbers won't knock your socks off two touchdown passes and an interception the bottom line, though, they lost. Yeah. How does he eliminate that one interception, continue to take care of the ball, and maybe increase the number of times he puts the ball in the end zone with a the receiver? They throw right away, and that's complete out on the right side. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. You look at this cold defense. They were terrific in the win over Tennessee a week ago. In all defensive teams that I know, Talk about creating turnovers. Takeaways, they call them. And anytime you can get two or more in a game, you've had a really, really good performance. They exceeded that number in a big way. Now Lawrence to throw on second down. This one complete to Christian Kirk. 23 yards to pick up there. I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. Not even a chance to pitch that one as he's swallowed up in the backfield. DeForest Buckner using that size to force his way in there and make the stop behind the line. This defense is a difficult one to prepare for, one of the best in the league. They'll come at you from all angles, and they did a nice job there stopping him for a loss. So their task a little bit more difficult now, second and 13 that they're walking up on. Now a late signee let go by Minnesota in June. It's Dalvin Cook. They will finally be taken down, but not before he gets it to the court. 16-yard line. It's a gain of 35. They had a chance to limit his yardage, but he was able to fight off that tackle. So it's not just the responsibility of the guys who missed the tackles along the way. It's all 11 on defense, able to stop this guy, unable to do it on that play. They've got to find a way. How about his ability to break through and gain that yardage? So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Now Lawrence. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. He had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Man in motion is Agnew. Looking to throw Lawrence toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Here's Lawrence to throw. And he'll just get rid of it. 
The Colts D sticking to their assignments, and that brings up Ford. Smart move to throw that one away. You're in field goal range, so you definitely don't want to be loose with the ball. And that's great work by this defense to force a fourth down. The kick by McManus is good. And the Jaguars grab a 3-0 lead. In the end, the opening drive, Charles does yield points. Maybe not the touchdown that they wanted, though. They have a bottom line. They wanted to get something out of that drive, and they did that. Three points, they won't turn that down at all. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. So here come the Colts to take over for the first time. And leading the way is the number four pick in the draft out of Florida. Here's Anthony Richardson. And he's been playing at an elite level here in this early half of the season. Tops in the league in touchdown passes at this point. This is definitely a wide open offense. And we'll see if he can keep a string of good games going right here. First and ten. Here's Richardson with it. This one completes Alec Pierce. A good pick up there. 26 yards. And we're going to see the ball in the air quite a bit here. This is a top five passing offense in the NFL. And they certainly like to get everybody involved. So this defense, they're going to have to be able to counter punch somehow. They couldn't there. And it's an opening drive first down. They run with the All-Pro from a couple of years ago, Jonathan Taylor. And good space to operate there as he takes this down inside the 35-yard line. 16 more on that one and another first down. Well, no slow start here. A couple nice chunk plays back-to-back. -back. I love the momentum that they're showing here early because they did it both ways, right? Threw the ball on first down for a nice chunk of yardage. Came right back and ran the ball. Looks like they got the defense set back on their heels. Let's see if they can keep this moving. The numbers for Woods last week, he was pretty prophetic. He said before that game, I want to get in the end zone often. He got there three times. Yes, yeah, one thing to catch a lot of footballs, that is important, but it's what you do after the catch that can make you great. And he had a great game last week. From the 29, here's the second and five. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Again, it's Taylor. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. That one a 14-yard play, and it keeps this drive moving. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play card, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's kind of like clockwork right now for them. Anytime they think they've got him over beyond the markers, you know they're going to throw it his way. And that's not going to change even after that incompletion was forced. On second down, it's Taylor. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. On third down, here's Richardson. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. It's pretty early in the game, but they've already tried to establish it not just as a runner, but as a receiver as well. Didn't happen there, but I wouldn't be surprised at all to see them try again shortly. Going for it on fourth, here's Richardson. And it's going to be batted down. It will go the other way with the football. They can't hook up here on the fourth down pass attempt. And the Jaguars are going to take possession here in the turnover on downs. They kept it in the air on fourth, Charles. They ran on first and second down, tried it through the air on third and fourth. Couldn't come away with anything on fourth and goal. And remember, in these situations, the field is really condensed. Everything is squeezed tight. So as a defender, you can actually take more chances here because they won't have as much time to throw the football, and a receiver really can't run past you. If they do, they run out of the back of the end zone. Nice job by the D, shutting them down. And he'll take this one only up to about his 13-yard line. The numbers a week ago for Cook. 17 carries, 57 yards. Uh, it's a very nice winning streak that they're on, and they've really seen this offense come into its own as a unit. And one of the keys is that the ground game has been established, and it's keeping the defense honest near the line of scrimmage. Sometimes that leads to huge games for him. 
Other times, he plays a complimentary role to someone else. But however, he's under pressure, and he'll go down. They'll sack him on what ought to be the final play of this first quarter. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. 3 nothing after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Jacksonville, and it's the Jags with the football. As they've got it with a third down and long coming up. Right, let's go. So now after the sack of Lawrence, the Jags looking at a third and long. Third down, Dalvin Cook. And he gets it up to the 10-yard line here. It'll be a gain of five, and the punt team will now come out on fourth down. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. It's a 45-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and ten. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. And on the last drive, they were in field goal range. They just opted not to kick it, didn't get it. How does that change the mentality this go around? I don't think it changes much for the head coach because this is what he preaches all the time. Attack at all times in any spot on the field. And he likes touchdowns, not field goals. Now, your field goal kicker, you got to make sure you nurse him through and say, OK, don't worry about it. When we need you, you've got to be ready to go. And the team, of course, loves to see points on the board. So let's see if it changes a little bit if they're in the same spot again. Yeah, we'll see what the decision is here if they get to that spot. 19, Tiger, 19, Tiger. Ready? First and 10, it's Richardson. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's McKenzie. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and it'll be second down. Richardson now on second down. Over the middle complete. That's McKenzie. And this play still live. He faked the spike. Go throw it. The passing game for the Colts finding its stride. Another first down. <laughs> I can't help but chuckle a little bit because at this point, it can't be a surprise to anyone in the building who's going to get the ball. They just keep feeding him over and over, and he just keeps on delivering. Got his man complete over the middle. It's McKenzie. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Ball at the six here as they work with a second and two. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Jonathan Taylor with his ninth rushing touchdown on the year. And the Colts have taken the lead. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up. Meaning, when you get on a guy, you just stay right there, and each guy has his own assignment. That allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Matt Gay on for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. After the touchdown, it's Gay to kick this one away. And they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. We'll see how this one continues. 
50 yards on the ground for him so far. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Again, it's Cook. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add a little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. Two minutes to play in this first half. 7-3, our score. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Lawrence will throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. Hey, kill, 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 kill. On second down, Cook. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. He's going to get this one down to Cook. And he will have a Jaguars first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. That one thrown away from the pocket. The officials kind of looking at each other but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram, and he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Nine yards not quite enough and they'll be left now with third and one so they just need one yard here to pick up the first down hey, Jupiter, Jupiter. on third and one it's Lawrence and Ingram holds it in and he gets his down inside the 35 before going out of bounds back receptions for him and it's another first down it's a throw again is Lawrence oh, a heavy rush and down he goes it was the linebacker Shaquille Leonard who applied the heat they just gave up a sack there if I'm not mistaken they gave up four last week didn't they yes and just looking really porous aren't they they really are and I'm wondering if they're gonna have to start thinking about keeping the tight end in maybe a and pressure coming and they got him once again the Jaguars is going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half now on third and long they'll look to throw and that is incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. Colts taking the field again, running back Jonathan Taylor at center stage. And we checked the rushing numbers so far here into week six, and the returns have been really good. Now, you're starting to hit that stride middle of the season toward the end. They're certainly hoping they can keep up this production. They are because one of the adages in the NFL is that defense travels and defense endures even in bad weather, right? You know what else does? A good running game. And people want that, especially as you head down the stretch. You may play outdoors in some nasty stuff. You're trying to get to the playoffs. This is the time to get it going. And individually, I don't think you should just think about 1,000 yards either. The bar has to be set higher with this beginning. This pass caught. It's Woods. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Richardson working from the gun. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. So, Charles, you look at this offense. What a start to the season. Five wins without a loss. 
When do you think that you start believing that maybe you're in the midst of something special? Well, you and I both know every head coach never wants that thought to creep into a locker room. But the truth of the matter is, not quite at this time, because if we look at the Steelers in 2020, they're a great example. Remember, they started 11-0, then lost 5-6 of six and went out in the first round. But I think if you get toward mid-November, the Thanksgiving time frame, and you're still doing this, that's when things start to get real for a ball club. So we come to half. Well, we'll move right through the break then, skipping halftime and back to the field for the start of the second half. And we welcome you back live now inside the booth alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, set and ready to rock for the third quarter. Second half ready to get underway. The Colts with a lead, and they will receive the football. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So here are the Colts to take over. Remember, they're riding that five-game winning streak and right now in the driver's seat in this ball game as well. Escapes the sack. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. And now a stoppage, and looks like we have a Colt who was shaken up on that last play. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. A good position to be in here, second and inches. And now the first throw for the backup quarterback. And this will be swung out wide for Taylor. And Taylor going to pick up the Colts first down as he'll get this up past the 35-yard line. These two teams met in Indy earlier in the year with the Colts coming out on top. So a win here in Jacksonville would give them the season series. Minshew, first and ten. That is caught. Michael Pittman with it. It's a gain of 35. They came out with an aggressive mindset to start the third quarter, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them take more of these type of deep shots as this game moves along. They connected there. They expect to connect on more before this one's over. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Accepted and it backs the offense up a little bit. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. Now it's Richardson. A short throw pulled in by Woods. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Here's Richardson to throw. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Back to the air with Richardson. And they snap him short of the first. As he can only get to the 20. So the completion good for six yards. And that'll bring up fourth down. to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. And the Jaguars are going to take possession here on the turnover on downs. Oftentimes with these gadget plays, these fakes, we focus on the offense. It's a hit. They practiced this this week. They were ready. But the defense has practiced these situations too. And just look at it this way. The two owners sitting up in their boxes, one is saying, boy, is my team well prepared? And the other one's like, I got to talk to my coaches. What were they thinking? Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at the 31 yard line. Now Lawrence. They'll complete this to Ingram as tight end. 
And it'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. From the 38 now, here's second and a couple. Here's Lawrence. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Meanwhile, Lawrence's throw here taken in by Ingram. And he's down right around midfield after a gain of two, maybe three. From midfield now, Lawrence. And his throw here is incomplete. I certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Throwing again here, it's Lawrence. And that will be incomplete. The passing windows are just not there. That's just another example of how great this defense has been all game long. And that's exactly what a top 10 defense can do. They can really change the game tempo and frustrate you as you try to execute offensively. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. Now Richardson back to throw it. He's got his man. That's Woods on the out route. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Final minute now in the third quarter. On second down, it's Richardson to throw it. Over the middle, complete. That's McKenzie. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. Play action. Now Richardson. And that is incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there's not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Richardson to throw off play action. He's going to try and go deep again. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Right to the ground by the linebacker, Foyer Aluakon. We have played three quarters. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. As it looks like we are just about set and ready to begin with the fourth. Going for it on fourth, Richardson. The throw on target to his receiver, McKenzie. Inside the 20. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Isaiah McKenzie with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Colts add on to their lead, and it's looking like that win streak is going to extend another week. They have to love seeing that from their young quarterback here in the fourth quarter, able to further that lead with a touchdown pass. He didn't go turtle, did he? And you know what I mean by that. I had an old coach used to say all the time, hey, when we have a lead late, don't just tuck in and try and ride it out. Go out and play and extend the lead. And that's what he did. Gay is on for the point after. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. A drive that time of six plays. And the result for the Colts is a touchdown. 
Following the touchdown, here's Gay to kick it away. And no return here for Agnew, so they'll bring it out, start the drive at the 25. And now out come the Jags. And the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Here's Lawrence to throw. Setting up the screen for Cook. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. A little screen pass, back door to and that time worked well for a solid game. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. And he's got his man on the out route. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. Lawrence going to throw again. And the pressure gets to Lawrence, and he'll go down. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack, and it brings up second. That's number four, sack number four. They had four last week, so he's he's been down on the ground a lot. Partner, they say the eye in the sky does not lie, and that's indeed the case because they watched the game tape from the previous week, incorporated into their own defensive scheme, and continued to get after this quarterback. And now this defense will be searching for sack number five. Throw left side, complete to Ingram. And they're going to speed things up here. On third down, Lawrence. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Well, he leads the NFL in interceptions and nearly added to that total. Got his hand on it, couldn't quite corral it. It's been a Pro Bowl-type season for him, and the term ball hawk really comes into play, doesn't it? Yeah, I like that one a lot because teams want to avoid that type of a player, but sometimes you just can't. He just knows where the ball is. And that one, an absolute backbreaker. A chance to get back within a score, couldn't do it. Yeah, that one went begging, as they say, right? There's the opportunity, and it was missed. But all hope's not lost just yet. But boy, getting back within one score would have been a powerful motivator for their defense to take the field with. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. First and 10, Taylor now. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. He was brought down by Foya Sade Aluakin. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get your reset. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. And now right out of the two-minute break, We'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Richardson. Got his man complete over the middle. It's McKenzie. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts. Now it looks like he'll throw here as he'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. And he's not able to get away. Sacked back at the 22. Brandon, that's just football one-on-one. -on -one. If you're out of the pocket, you've got to get rid of the football in this situation. You cannot take a sack in a two-minute drill. Oh, into a sea of defenders have intercepted. Picked off by 
Tyson Campbell. And the Jags are going to take over once again at their own 25-yard line. Defensively that time, they were in zone coverage. As a rookie QB, what lesson can you learn there? Well, understand this. You saw zone in college, and the defensive backs reacted but they don't react like they do on this level. So when they're in zone and they see the ball coming to them, they'll react at least a half a second faster. You've got to know where you want to go with the ball and be decisive with it. Otherwise, the end result can be something you don't like. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. If this offense can't get it done, they'll think back to just a few plays and say to themselves, this was a winnable game and we let it get away. Still a chance to save it, but time's definitely running out. This definitely four down territory at this point, but a critical third down here. From the gun on third down, Lawrence. And a big loss here as he's taken down. The decision made for him. They've got to go. It's fourth down. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. And they have possession. And they have it at the 38-yard line. And that one, Charles, is just going to about wrap up what was no doubt a dominating defensive performance. Yeah, I don't care what team it is. I don't care who you play, whether they're strong offensively or not. Just giving up three points in the NFL, that's absolutely a dominant performance and one that they can build on. They'll go ahead and take the knee here, and the unbeaten season will continue. time and that should just about do it so this one winds up an indianapolis victory well on one side of this charles an impressive victory on the other i mean you think about it they scored in the first quarter but then they didn't score in quarters two three or four they're going to have a lot of work to do before stepping back on the field yeah it'd be an interesting tape to analyze won't it because why did it work in the first quarter but nothing in quarters two three and four so we always talk about adjustments. You don't just wait till halftime. You do it series to series. They'll be working on that in preparation for their next game. So for Indian.